What's up guys, Mike here, and today we are still missing a face cam. However, let's just forget about that for now, and instead let's talk about this video. Because you are about to see five of the most overshadowed slash forgotten clutch plays in NBA playoff history. Trust me when I say this, every single one of these shots is ridiculous, and if they weren't immediately overshadowed by something else, every single one of these plays would be in contention for top 10 NBA plays of all time time that's how amazing these shots are but for now let's just stop talking about them and let's get into the video so you can actually see them number five jerry west throughout the history of time jerry west has been forgotten as one of the nba's top players i mean the man played 14 seasons was a 14 time all-star 10 time member of the first team all nba and is currently fourth among retired players in career points per game with 27 so obviously jerry west was very very good which is why he also is currently the player used for the nba's logo and fun in fact, he is the only player to ever be named the NBA Finals MVP despite playing for the losing team. Which actually makes sense because Jerry West was 1 for 8 in NBA Finals appearances, but that's a story for a different video. For now, let's go back to the first Finals Jerry West ever played in, the 1962 championship against the Boston Celtics, and let's jump to Game 3 where the series is tied and the game is tied with just seconds remaining. Obviously, in this situation, because they have the ball, it looks like Boston is either going to win the game on a buzzer beater or the game was going to head into overtime. However, enter Jerry West. Just watch this. Bob Cousy, number 14, if he can. West is between them on defense. Watch West. He taps it away. Tries to beat the clock. Beats Cousy. Beats the clock. The Lakers win it. Incredibly, West was able to steal the inbounds pass and lay it in just before the buzzer sounds, giving us one of the most clutch moments in NBA history. This moment should play during every NBA Finals when we look back at past great plays, but because this happened in the 60s and because the Lakers would lose to the Celtics in seven games, most people have completely forgotten about this, which is very unfortunate for the logo, but side note, it's also unfortunate for Elgin Baylor because Baylor averaged 40 points and 18 rebounds in these finals and then would go on to end his career with zero NBA championships, but again, that's a story for another day. For now, let's fast forward in Jerry West's career because he has another shot that is forgotten. Yup, we are now in the 1970 NBA finals and this time the Lakers were matched up against the Knicks. We are in game two here and after David Debouchier drained a crazy shot of his own to put the Knicks up by two with three seconds left, Jerry West went out and did this. With three seconds to go! Two seconds, one second, West throws it up! shot to tie the game in the NBA Finals. A shot that would have been a game winner if there was a three-point line at the time, and because clearly the basketball gods hated Jerry West at this point, the Lakers would still go on to lose this series. I mean, at least Jerry West did win a championship in 1972, but still, how unlucky can one man be? Number four, Chauncey Billups. We all remember the 2004 Pistons as the last team to win a championship without a true superstar as they were the definition of team basketball. With that said, if we were to point to one man who led this team, it would be Chauncey Billups. And coincidentally, it is Billups who gives us our next forgotten moment. Right now, we are in game five of the second round of the 2004 playoffs, and the Pistons are matched up against the New Jersey Nets, a team that was both the back-to-back -back Eastern Conference champions the previous two seasons, as well as a team that swept the Pistons in the Eastern Conference Finals just one year before. In this game five, the end of regular regulation was actually pretty insane altogether as with 30 seconds left, where the Pistons were down by one point when Mike James airballed a three, then Chauncey Billups missed a contested layup, and Rasheed Wallace missed a tip. -in. This led to some free throws, and eventually, with around 12 seconds left, the Pistons were down two and had to intentionally
intentionally fouled Jason Kidd. Kidd would miss both free throws and Chauncey Billups got the ball with a chance to win the game except this was not his clutch moment because Richard Jefferson would make an incredible block and so the Pistons were forced to foul with just 2.9 seconds left. If Kerry Kittles made both of these free throws, the game would be over. And since the Pistons had no timeouts, even if Kittles missed, the game seemed over anyway. However, after Kerry Kittles did miss the first free throw and then made the second, the ball would end up in Chauncey Billups' hand and this time... Pistons need a three and they have just under three seconds to do it. Here's Chauncey Billups. Here it is! He's got it! He's got it! Chauncey Phillips hits the three! Yes, Chauncey would make a half-court shot to tie the game and send it to overtime. An absurd ending to a crazy sequence of events. Of course, this play is on this list though because the Pistons would actually lose this game in triple overtime, but they still would win the 2004 NBA Finals, so I don't think Chauncey really minds. Number three, Ralph Sampson. The Houston Rockets of the late 1980s are one of the NBA's true lost dynasties due to a lot of their core players ruining their careers through heavy drug use. This was a young team that could have made multiple runs to the NBA Finals, but instead completely fell apart. And while drug use was a huge part of the Rockets' demise, another main reason these Houston teams have become forgotten was a major injury that ruined Ralph Sampson's career. Because during the 1986 season, Sampson would go up for a rebound against the Boston Celtics and fell directly on his back. This back injury would lead to multiple follow-up injuries as Sampson's career progressed, and a player who was named second team all nba in just his second season would go on to make his final all-star game in his fourth year and was out of the nba at the age of just 31. coincidentally though the fall that would ruin samson's career also took place in the same season as his greatest moment as a pro because in the 1986 western conference finals the rockets would match up against the showtime lakers a team that had won the championship in 1985 and would go on to to win the championship in 1987 and 1988. This right here is the reason the Rockets are considered a lost dynasty. Because in the 1986 Western Conference Finals, Houston would actually jump out to a 3-1 series lead, which brings us to Game 5. Here, we're on the Lakers home court and the score is tied with just one second left. If this game went into overtime and the Lakers won, they would gain some serious momentum and who knows what would have happened. However, this game did not go into overtime because Ralph Sampson did this. McCray will inbound. One second on the clock. Sampson. It goes. It's over. A miraculous shot by Ralph Sampson. Just look at this shot. It is ridiculous. Ridiculous. I have no idea how he made this, but he did, and so yes, this young Houston Rockets team shocked the Lakers at the height of their powers. This is why Houston looked like the NBA's next big thing. However, the Rockets would lose the 1986 Finals to the Boston Celtics, and again, drugs and injuries would ruin them. The Rockets would go on to get redemption almost a decade later as they would win the 1994 and 95 NBA championships, but Ralph Sampson was not a part of those teams, which is just a shame. Number two, Tim Duncan. In the 2004 NBA playoffs, the second round matchup between the Los Angeles Lakers and the San Antonio Spurs was a true battle of early 2000s NBA powerhouses. On the one hand, we had the Spurs, who were defending NBA champions, and on the other hand, we had the Lakers, a team that had three-peated between the 2000 and 2002 seasons before their run of titles was ended by the Spurs in the 2003 playoffs, which is why it was no surprise that this 2004 playoff series would be an absolute battle and we would remember Derek Fisher's iconic 0.4 seconds left miracle shot in game five as the moment that swung this series because before this shot the two teams were tied at two games apiece so whoever won this game would have some serious momentum the thing is though before Derek Fisher's shot Tim Duncan had a ridiculous shot of his own because after Kobe Bryant drained a mid-range jumper to give the Lakers the lead with 11 seconds left the Spurs would call a timeout and eventually, with just over five seconds left, they would inbound the ball in the game's seemingly last possession. This is what happened. To Duncan. He gets doubled. Shaq all over him. He gets away, a fadeaway. He makes it with four tenths left. Unbelievable. 
Solo. As you can see, Tim Duncan tried to find an open man but couldn't, so he was forced to take this prayer of a shot that Shaq was fingertips away from blocking and by the grace of God, or Greg Popovich, this shot miraculously went in. This should have gone down as one of Tim Duncan's most iconic moments. However, Derek Fisher would go on to upstage him and the Lakers would win this series the next game. Of course, begging the question, what if? Because if Duncan shot had ended this game, the Spurs very well could have won the series and the 2004 NBA championship. But instead, they would go home early and now we have number one, Larry Bird. Obviously, as we all know, the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers had a somewhat of a rivalry during the 1980s. As in the 80s, the two teams would combine to win 8 out of the decade's 10 championships and of course, as this rivalry between the two teams formed, an individual rivalry between Larry Bird and Magic Johnson would also take place. Bird and Magic would both win 3 MVPs throughout their careers, but because Magic won 5 championships compared to Bird's 3 and because the Lakers won 2 out of the 3 finals in which they actually played the Celtics, it is Magic Johnson who is remembered for having the better career. The thing is though, all of that could have changed if the Boston Celtics were able to just grab one rebound off a free throw. To show you what I mean, let's go back to game four of the 1987 finals, where the Celtics trailed the Lakers two games to one in the series. In this game, Magic Johnson would hit this iconic mini skyhook to win, but if we rewind just a little bit, with eight seconds left, Kareem was at the foul line and needed to make his second free throw to tie the game. He would miss, but the ball would go out of bounds, and from there, Magic would then go on to hit his game winner. Which means already, if the Celtics had just grabbed this rebound, there is a very good chance they would have won this game. However, this missed rebound is not the forgotten play for this list because on the play before Kareem was fouled, the Celtics were down by one when Larry Bird did this. Harris playing with five fouls. Open his age. Bird goes for three. with 12 seconds left. As you can see, Bird connected on a huge three with just 12 seconds left to give Boston a two-point lead. Which means if the Celtics had just held on and gotten a defensive stop to end this game, Bird would have added another game-winning shot to his legacy and going even further, the Celtics would have had a chance to take on the Lakers in a game seven. Because these two teams were so evenly matched, that game seven could have gone either way. But if it was Boston who came out on top, Bird would have ended his career with the same amount of championships as Magic and also would have held an individual finals edge over the Lakers. That would have been huge for his overall resume as a player, however, Boston was not able to get that stop and Larry Bird was also not able to make this three to win the game. Again, this missed shot is another play that people forget about, but for now, that wraps up today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one, it was a lot of fun to make, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe for more NBA videos like this. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're the man, we all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. By the way, if you're still here while the music is queued, here are two videos I think you are going to love watching. All you have to do is just click on either one of them on the screen right here. And other than that, guys, again, have a great day and peace.